Black Myth Wukong has released PC system requirements. This game is coming to PC and PlayStation 5 on August 20th, 2024. Uh, this looks to be an Unreal Engine 5 graphical showcase with some uh, big fully path traced NVIDIA features as well. Uh, but one interesting thing to note, notice PS5, Steam, there's no Xbox listed here. What's going on with that? I followed up on that, and from the game developers, we have the quote, we are currently optimizing the Xbox Series XS version to meet our quality standards, so it won't release simultaneously with the other platforms. So it sounds like it will come to Xbox, but they're having issues with optimization, most likely due to the Series S being underpowered. We've seen other Unreal Engine 5 games struggle on the Series S. Uh, like, I, uh, for example, Lords of the Fallen was was uh, not in great shape on the Series S platform at launch. I mean, all of the consoles in general could be a bit rough in patches, but especially the Series S. Uh, for PC users, do note that this game will have de novo on the PC version. This is listed in the Steam page now, uh, so be aware of that. Now, we do have the full PC system requirements list and we're gonna dive into them, but there's a massive caveat that not enough people who are sharing this screenshot are talking about because it's not part of the screenshot. So if you've just seen the PC system requirements list here, you might not have noticed that the actual Steam page they're coming from has this footnote, which uh, is, is absolutely massive. It says, the above specifications were tested with DLSS, FSR, XCSS enabled. Now, first of all, that confirms that the game has DLSS, FSR, and XCSS, but second of all, it means that we need to take a, a huge grain of salt with what we're seeing here, because it means you're not running these at native resolution, and so that might mean this game's gonna be a lot harder to run than this might initially appear uh, once you take into account that upscaling is enabled when they're giving us these graphics card requirements. Speaking of which, if you're feeling like you need an upgrade to run this game or any other of the big like Unreal Engine 5 games coming out, today's sponsor Jawa.gg can help you out. For one thing, they offer great deals on their used market and I can actually get you $10 off your first purchase using code OWEN10. Follow the link in the video description and or pinned comment. However, to fund that upgrade, you should also sell your old graphics card. Too many people like put the old one in the closet, uh, put in the new one, and you didn't use it to fund your upgrade. Jawa, uh, can, you can list it yourself, but they also offer the simplest and fastest way to sell your GPU if you're just like too much of a hassle. Uh, well, they take all the hassle out of it. It's this simple. Uh, step one, you tell them about the GPU model and condition, they send you an instant offer, you uh, print out your free shipping label and mail them the GPU, the shipping price is factored into the offer and everything, so you don't need to worry about that for yourself. They inspect it, uh, make sure everything checks out, and boom, most sellers get paid within one business day after the part is received. Uh, and it's, it's as simple as that. A bunch of great uh, testimonials from satisfied customers and all of that. Again, click the get, get an instant offer button. Uh, and uh, again, if you're looking for great deals on, the, on their market of parts, use code OWEN10 for $10 off your first purchase. Now, let's get into more of the details on this P uh, PC system requirements list because there's a lot going on here. Uh, first of all, this is broken down into a few categories. Here, I'm gonna become a mouse pointer. Ah, I am the point. All right, so we've got minimum recommended and ultra settings at uh, 1080p, 1080p, and 4K. Notice there's no 1440p, we just jump up uh, you know, graphics presets here. But then there's a whole full ray tracing requirements, although there's uh, a ray tracing low at 1080p, ray tracing medium at 1080p, and then a, uh, a ray tracing very high at 4K. Also on the uh, minimum recommended here, it looks like the overall graphics preset is at medium, and then you, you uh, adjust the ray tracing settings up. And then here you're at high overall graphics settings and then very high ray tracing. So there's a lot going on here. So uh, the other big thing that's missing here is, guys, they didn't put the frame rate target. So developers, game developers, okay, when you're making these lists, like you obviously put a lot of time into making a big chart here with a whole bunch of settings and, and, and every, everything, and that's, that's to be commended. But if you don't put the frame rate target and let us guess whether it's 30 or 60 or somewhere in between, that makes all of this a lot less useful. 
and doubly so when combined with uh, you're using upscaling. Okay, fine if you're gonna do that because honestly, Unreal Engine 5 uh, really relies on upscaling for a lot of its technologies, but at least tell us which setting you're using. Is this DLSS quality? Is this DLSS performance? Um, it's hard to say, guys. So uh, with all of that being said, I'm actually gonna say that th there's not so much uh, I can say with specifics other than here's what we've got, here's how your GPUs and CPUs might stack up in relation to this, how that will actually end up performing and looking. Uh, I guess I'll need to run some benchmarks when the game actually comes out. So let me know in the comment section if you're interested in that. Now there is a couple of things we can say for sure, which is you wanna be on Windows 10 or 11, and storage space, you need 130 gigabytes. They do say an H HDD will be supported, but it's strongly recommended for an SSD, and all of the things beyond the absolute minimum are saying that you should have an SSD. System RAM is also saying 16 gigabytes, and then moves up to 32 gigabytes uh, at their 4K ultra, you know, very high settings here. So keep that in mind. Now, I also like that they break out the VRAM requirement separately from listing the GPUs. So you're not speculating on what VRAM uh, amount is required. So interestingly, they're saying that six gigabytes of VRAM is fine for 1080p uh, uh, medium settings with some amount of upscaling. We have no idea how much, but with some upscaling, I would guess on the minimum settings here, they're probably using performance mode upscaling, meaning they're probably just like, you know, rendering the game as low resolution as possible to try to get it to run. And I would guess they're probably targeting 30 FPS here. But again, they're kind of leaving us up to speculate on that. But it looks like you can get by with six gigabytes of VRAM, but if you're on a four gigabyte VRAM card, you're probably gonna be running into problems. Um, looks like six gigabytes of VRAM though, they're also saying is good for high settings at 1080p. So maybe there actually is a bit more wiggle room here because we're using um, higher graphic settings that would usually come with higher VRAM cost. Are we using the same upscaling settings? Hard to say, we're still at 1080p. But they are saying that if you're moving to 4K very high, that you would be wanting 12 gigabytes of VRAM, but they're also not specifying uh, any kind of 1440p requirement in between, and they're also not saying how much upscaling is being used here as well. Uh, at 4K settings, it wouldn't surprise me if they were actually talking about performance mode upscaling, um, because uh, you know DLSS, uh, you know if you use the auto settings for DLSS, it, it would kind of recommend performance mode at 4K. Uh, quality mode at 1080p and balanced mode at 1440p. So anyway, that's just some speculation on what kind of uh, upscaling they might be talking about here. Now, uh, let's actually talk about the CPUs before we talk about the GPUs, uh, because the CPUs we can deal with quickly. Uh, there's a couple of things to notice. One is that most of the settings here, are even all the way up to the ultra 4K full ray tracing, is a Core i7-9700 or a Ryzen 5 5500. Uh, that's the same when you step it back to here, it's the same here and here. The only differences are in the minimums for both non-ray traced and ray traced. So the minimums are a uh, Intel Core i5 uh, and, or, or 8400 or Ryzen 5 1600. Uh, if we pull up some specs on those, a Ryzen 5 1600 is a six core 12 thread uh, CPU uh, from quite a while ago at this point, they came out at tw in 2017. It wasn't super high end, um, you know, when it came out. So, so I don't think they're asking a lot here. And then the uh, Intel CPU listed along with that is the i5-8400, which is six core, six thread, and I think would generally perform better in games than a Ryzen 5 1600. Um, but they're saying that both of the, you know, it's a 2017 part, they're saying both of those should at least get you in the door. But again, while they're not listing it specifically, I'm guessing this is kind of a, a 30 FPS experience, at least for these minimums. Now, on the ray tracing minimums, they keep the Ryzen 5 1600, but they move the, in, the Intel CPU to a, a Core i5-9400. And I've gotta say that I, I don't really understand why. The i5-9400, I when compared with the uh, i5-8400 are almost the same thing. <laughs> like, uh, they're both six core 12 thread Coffee Lake processors with a slight change to the boost clock. <laughs> I mean, 
Uh, there's not a huge difference between these, so that seems a bit odd. Um, but other than that, uh, the CPUs then jump up to a uh, Core i7-9700 or Ryzen 5-5500. Uh, the Ryzen 5 5500 being a bit of an odd choice just from like, uh, it kind of came out later and is a bit of an odd part uh, as that generation goes, but whatever. Uh, what we're seeing from this is uh, the i7-9700 is an eight core, eight thread processor uh, from back in 2019, but was a fairly high-end processor in 2019 although it's getting a little bit older now. And then we've got the Ryzen 5 5500, which is six core, 12 thread. And this one uh, came out in 2022 as a bit of a um, expansion to the Ryzen 5 5000 series platform. Uh, I don't need to quite get into all the details on that. But anyway, that's the listed CPUs. So it looks like if you have a fairly modern mid-range uh, gaming processor, you should be okay, uh, assuming that probably the recommended and ultra settings here are targeting 60 FPS on the CPU. Uh, but again, they don't s explicitly say that. I would assume at least the minimums are probably only down at 30 frames per second. Um, anyway, so again, not a perfect system requirements chart, but we're making, uh, uh, making of it what we can. Now, what if we look at the GPUs? So the kind of good news here is that to just play the game, it looks like a GTX 1060 or an RX 580 can get you in the door. If we pull up, uh, you know, how, how does your GPU stack up against that? I'll link this in the video description, but this is Tech Power Up's relative performance chart for GPUs. And it's very useful because you can s click on any GPU, set it as the 100% baseline, and then you can see how other GPUs kind of uh, uh, fit into that. So for example, we can see that the RX 580 is fairly similar in performance to the GTX 1060. So those make sense. Uh, if you're on something like a GTX 970, you're at uh, you know similar performance, bit less, but we might run into issues uh, with things like how we said it lists six gigabytes of VRAM. So so uh, GTX 96, you know 970, sorry, uh, wouldn't be having that VRAM requirement that we're seeing there. So perhaps you can spot where your GPU falls in relation to this. We can also scroll up and see more powerful graphics cards. Now, how far do we have to scroll up to get to their next recommendation? So uh, again, if we're going for the uh, recommended settings here, which would be high settings 1080p with some amount of upscaling, we don't know how much, you would jump up to an RTX 2060 or an AMD RX 5700 XT or an ARC A750. Let's look at how all of those stack up. So if we go back to this relative performance chart, if we keep the 1060 as the baseline, you can scroll through these other GPUs, which will again be performing slightly better as we go. And then eventually we get to an RTX 2060, which is about 59% more powerful uh, than that 1060 was. But I will say that in, in things like Unreal Engine 5, which are very DX12 focused, I think the gap can actually be larger. Um, so it wouldn't surprise me if it's actually a larger performance difference going up to the 2060 there. Uh, the 5700, uh, if we, it was it the XT or the, yeah, 5700 XT and then the ARC A750. So if we take a look at those, so if we now set the RTX 2060 as the baseline here, let's see how those kind of stack up compared to here. So the 5700 XT would generally be a bit stronger than a 2060 and the A750 a bit stronger than that. But Given that system requirements charts aren't generally trying to say you're gonna get identical performance on these GPUs, they're just trying to give you a range of graphics cards from the different manufacturers that are in the same ballpark and will get you roughly whatever performance target they're giving us here. Unfortunately, they didn't really give us a performance target. Is it 60 FPS? So maybe we're like 60 FPS if we're using DLSS quality with the high settings at 1080p. I'm just kind of question mark, I don't know. So what performance gets you that, that yeah, unfortunately the system requirements chart is leaving us a bit lacking here. Also, it doesn't give us any idea about 1440p. Now, what would I say about 1440p? Well, I would say that if this is their 1080p recommendations, it's already including some upscaling you would definitely need to be significantly more powerful. So we could scroll down the list here and you'd be more and more capable of maybe 1440p. Uh, so how, if, if we get up to their 4K list, uh, then we now see the RTX 4070 and the 7800 XT. So if we uh, get to that point, 
Uh, the 4070 and the 7800 XT are again in a similar ballpark and they're about double the performance of what we were seeing on that 2060. And they have a lot more VRAM to work with, which they noted on the system requirements list. 7800 XT generally a bit more powerful when you're not using ray tracing, but within the same ballpark, 4070 and 7800 XT. If you're on previous generation pro products like a, you know, 3070 Ti, a 6800, you're, you're a little bit behind. If you're on a 3080, you're roughly in the same ballpark, a 6900 XT, you're roughly in the same ballpark, 6800 XT. But again, what kind of performance is, is this giving us? Well, so I would say that my guess is for 4K, they're probably using performance mode upscaling. And that means that if you wanted a 1440p requirement, I would say if you were at 1440p with less aggressive upscaling, like maybe quality level upscaling, uh, these same two GPUs would probably fit into that. But again, we're having to speculate a bit because of the lack of uh, detail in the system requirements chart. And again, um, maybe we're talking 60 FPS-ish considering it's their like high-end, uh, you know, recommendation. But again, they didn't actually tell us that, which is really frustrating. Now, what happens when we get into the ray tracing situation? Well, when we talk about ray tracing, we should also mention that the, um, NVIDIA has uh, released an RTX on uh, kind of trailer for this game showing that it shows uh, fully ray traced water caustics and reflections. Um, and then we also have uh, fully ray traced global illumination. And we also have uh, fully ray traced uh, shadows as well as part of that. So there's a lot going on here. Uh, I think we also get a little bit of a uh, gameplay shot here. So this definitely kind of looks to be in the Souls-like type of game here. But uh, anyway, I think the game does look pretty cool. So there's a lot of ray tracing effects uh, on display. This is one of, one of NVIDIA's fully ray traced games. And generally when we've seen that in things like Alan Wake 2, uh, that's pretty demanding, but you can scale things a bit here. But it wouldn't surprise me if uh, some of these uh, performance targets might be 30 FPS, not 60 FPS, or, or uh, uh, and also you heavily using upscaling and possibly frame generation as well. Um, so I'm just throwing that out there. Now that being said, uh, they do say an RTX 3060 would be capable of their minimum ray tracing requirement, which is medium settings plus ray tracing low settings, not clear exactly which of those ray tracing features are included or if it's just less bounces or what in the ray tracing low setting. Uh, but again, I would expect that to be pretty uh, heavily upscaled and probably not hitting 60 frames per second. Uh, for ray tracing medium, uh, they're saying an RTX 4060 should be able to do the job. Um, okay, again, probably using lots of uh, upscaling and possibly frame generation at this point. Uh, but again, it's not entirely clear. And for their 4K settings uh, with the actual high graphic settings, notice it's high graphic settings, not very high graphic settings, but they're turning ray tracing to very high. So that's interesting that this might not even be fully maxed out. They're saying a 4080 Super uh, should be able to get you there. Again, is it 60 frames per second? Maybe with, uh, you know, maybe. <laughs> Frame generation uh, is always a, th a thing. A performance mode upscaling, I don't know. So that's where all of this, like, we're using DLSS, but we're not telling you how much is a bit frustrating. Uh, they're also not listing any AMD equivalent GPUs in that section of the system requirement chart. So um, in these fully ray traced titles, like we've seen with, uh, you know, Alan Wake 2 and Cyberpunk and things like that, that tends to be where NVIDIA does have a pretty massive performance lead over AMD, more so than in a lighter ray tracing workloads, but we'll have to see, and they didn't give us any details here. Anyway, I know there wasn't, uh, uh, you know, there's, there's, th this wasn't perfect. Hopefully you did still find it useful. Um, this is a game that I am interested in benchmarking on the channel as a big Unreal Engine 5 game with also a lot of ray tracing features and things like that. Uh, so stay tuned and let me know in, in the comments if you're interested in that as well. Um, but hopefully you guys found the video useful and or interesting, and I hope all of you have an excellent day. Don't forget to check out uh, jawa.gg to sell your old GPU to fund your upgrade. And remember, I can get you uh, $10 off your first purchase using code Owen10. I hope all of you have an excellent day.